We watched AEW Dynamite March 9th, 2022, a very newsworthy show, starting from the get-go. Chris Jericho comes out for a promo. He says Sunday was one of the greatest nights of uh, greatest nights of his career, even though his neck is sore, even though he tapped out to Eddie Kingston's stretch plum. Can't believe that's actually moving a US company now in 2022. But still, it may have been his best match in AEW. Eddie awakened something in him Jericho did not know was there anymore. But at the end of the match, he did not live up to his word, and his word is everything. He wants to make good. So he calls out Eddie Kingston. Eddie comes out. He the There's a some very small portion of the crowd, a small but vocal portion of the crowd, chanting what at him, and he shuts them down like nobody has ever shut them down before. He just turned right out and said, Steve Austin's not here. There's no point in what you're doing. You're just dumb. Says, before the match, Jericho had gotten into his head. It's true, he had lost to John Moxley and Miro and CM Punk and every other big match he'd ever had in this company. But he knew a lot of people, read his article in the Players Tribune. He knew how much that meant to them. He had to live up to those people. And after he got the win, he cried, not because he was proud of the match or because he'd gotten the win, not for himself, not for Jericho, but for the people who read the article and what it meant to them and their their, their view of mental health and, and, and that kind of thing. So this handshake you want is not for me. It's not for uh, it's not for Jericho. I, I, he says, I dragged the old Jericho out. He, Jericho proved everyone wrong. Jericho says, I respect you. Thank you for one of the best matches of my career. And they have the big hearty handshake. But then out comes 2.0 and Daniel Garcia. And they attack Eddie Kingston. And they lay him down, throw him to the mat, and put the boots to him. And they attack Jericho. And they throw him to the mat and pretty much leave him alone. So the beating is continuing. That's not exactly what happened. It's. I mean, it is what happened, but the moment they grabbed him, mm-hmm. he went down and he starts holding his neck because he'd been dropped on his head sure. with that suplex. So what you were supposed to think as a viewer is, my God, his neck is so bad. Yeah. Just being touched, he's, he's rendered a, a paraplegic here. So it was actually very, very clever because, in fact... They didn't beat him up, mm-hmm. but because he had been dropped on his head and they built a whole match around it, I got to say, as we'll get to here in a moment, what actually happened, but they did such a good job in the first part of this segment that I, I won't say they totally got me, but the only reason they didn't totally get me was because we had just seen someone kick someone else in the balls and we had just seen two people who didn't like each other fight and then become a team afterwards. That's the only reason I figured that they can't possibly be like friends and a team after this. But had it not been for those two things, they did such a great job that I was thinking, my God, we may actually see the same fucking storyline <laughs> twice in three days. That's how good they did. Mm-hmm. And when he went down, like, I didn't even think for one second that it was a ruse. Later, it made sense that it was a ruse, but. The storyline in the neck and the dropping on the head and the the point of the match, all of that, he did such a great job grabbing his neck and writhing, I didn't even think for one second it was a ruse. I thought it was just storyline, he's got a bad neck. Mm -hmm. Very clever. Well, as it turns out, Proud and Powerful make the save with a bat, and they're ready to lay in one of these goofballs with a bat, but Jericho's on his feet, he says, no, I want to do it. And they pass him the baseball bat, and he uses it to attack Santana and Ortiz. It's a trap! And they are working him over. Jake Hager runs out, briefly seems conflicted, but immediately makes a decision to side with Chris Jericho. And there you go, everyone. The inner circle is dead. Born in the first episode of Dynamite, September 19th, 2019. Died on this most recent episode, March 9th, 2022. So it's Jericho, 2.0, Daniel Garcia, and Jake Hager. All five of them worked together to powerbomb Eddie Kingston through a table, and even with five men, they still nearly killed him. And Jericho dubs this new group the Jericho Appreciation Society. Yes. It's not subtle. You know, the uh, we had some people in the chat here saying, anyone got thoughts on the name? I don't know about Jericho Appreciation Society. A small part of me loves it. Well, here's the deal, everybody. Okay. Chris Jericho is 52. How old is Chris Jericho? I'll look it up. Find out for me. 50-something. He's he's in his early 50s. One way or the other. He's in his early 50s. So he's only 51. 51 years old. Mm-hmm. 51 years old, and uh, and he is... I mean, is there anybody listening to this right now that would not 
vote Chris Jericho into a professional wrestling hall of fame. That seems unlikely. I mean, he's absolutely without question. If you question. care enough to pay for the show, you're probably aware of what he's accomplished and what he's done. I mean, if they just created a hall of fame today, I mean, he's he's absolutely completely a first ballot hall of famer, okay? So, when you're a absolute first ballot hall of famer that's been doing this as long as he has and you're 51 years old, okay? Very hard to be a heel. Because it's like when when Flair used to try to turn heel in WCW. Like, he could get booed, but who the fuck wants to boo a 50-something-year-old Ric Flair? Like, nobody did. So, in order to be a 51-year-old first ballot Hall of Famer, in order to get booed, you gotta come up with something clever, okay? And what he has come up with is, my gimmick is that I am a sports entertainer. Yeah. I am an influencer, <laughs> and my group is called the Jericho Appreciation Society, okay? You're not supposed to like it. That's the point. <laughs> yes. He's got to come up with something that can make his character at his age and, you know, with the renown that he has, something to get the guy booed. And being a sports entertainer in AEW... I mean... That should get the job done. That should get the job done. I had the idea for Orton. Because uh, there was a point where I actually thought Randy Orton might go to AEW. And uh, Randy Orton going to AEW as WWE Randy Orton, Mm. doing the same style of match, I mean, he would have been such a fantastic heel. So now Jericho is basically, he's a sports entertainer, and he's got a group... Jericho Appreciation Society, men who appreciate Chris Jericho. The society of them, yes. Of course. So, you know, this whole thing, I mean, he's no idiot. It's very, very clever, and uh, it's what you have to do. Because, quite frankly, you know, at his age, this probably is going to be his last heel run. I've thought that quite a few times. Yes. Uh, so I we'll mean, see. maybe he can we'll pull see. it off at 60. Yeah. But you get to a certain age the where... Your role is like the old ass kicker yeah. who comes back and kicks ass as a baby face when shit really goes down. And that's that's like your role once or twice a year you come back. Ultimately, he's going to be in that position. But and, uh, if he can figure out a way to be 70-year-old Chris Jericho heel, uh, he's, uh, you know, whatever, whatever above a first ballot Hall of Famer would be. Because yeah. that'll be practically impossible. Just thinking about this, it is, it's is—it's been a while since Chris Jericho has reinvented himself, and it's about time. And he's been doing it for a few weeks now, and I guess it's its full underway. But yes, this is the latest new Chris Jericho. I'm your host, Brian Alvarez, joined, of course, by Big Vinny V. Hi, Brian. Craig. Hello. Lance Storm. Is that a towel? Craig, uh, legit looks like Julius Caesar. Yeah, I did my my hair down. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Yeah. Seems like we got a lion loose in, in uh, Lance's house, coincidentally. Yeah. <laughs> Is Lance, that a Lance, puma? Lance brought the yeah. jungle beast. I was hoping Bridger would come along to either feed me these grapes or wave me with one of those big fans, but when I suggested this, she was surprisingly negative. What? Why? I like that idea one bit. Why? Oh, my God, Vinny, please. Mm. Make sure you take that outfit to Hawaii and get video of you running down the beach in it. Oh, bro, oh. Th- this thing's going everywhere with me. It's awesome. All right, here we go. I couldn't take a big one. Uh. Mm. Excuse me. Look who's here. Vinny, hand her them grapes. I have the greatest wife. She's going to give me a couple of grapes, not too many. I'm on a low-carb diet. <laughs> <laughs> Like all Romans. <laughs> Have you ever eaten a grape before? It's not I've alive. I've fed a grape. Thank you, love. I appreciate it. I'll take one more. No, I won't. Oh, God, she's really... Hey! One more. Knock it off! Hey, we're not having a food fight in here. God damn it. Grapes all over the floor. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.